One of the projects I'm going to be working on is wiring the house with CAT6 networking cable. Now this is called CAT6 riser cable, which means that it's rated to run within the walls. This is a thousand foot reel here and you can pull from the center or from the sides just depending on the packaging. In this video, I'm going to show you how we take this long piece that I've pre-cut and terminate the ends so that we have a usable ethernet cable. I'm Kevin. I'm a techie, a do-it-yourselfer, and a first-time homeowner. Join me on this journey while I make it my own. What you're going to need for this project is a piece of cable. Now I've already pre-cut this piece here. You'll need a crimper. This one's nice because it's got a blade on it and it does multiple types of connectors. So you can do RJ11 or RJ45, which is ethernet. Other helpful tools are a little wire stripper, a X-Acto knife or some sort of sharp knife. These are handy if you're trying to strip the cable and you just want to nick the jacket and then peel it back. Um, sometimes that comes in handy. A network cable tester. These are cool little tools. Um, they've got LEDs, they slide apart, and they can test RJ45 or RJ11 cables. Basically, it's just LEDs and it's testing the continuity between each of the wires um, inside the cable. And so that's that's a good good way to make sure that your cable's good before you run it through the wall and start doing uh, crazy things. Then you've got these pass-through cable connectors by Cable Matters. I absolutely love these connectors. These are crimp connectors. And what's so nice about them is that when you slide your cable into these connectors, the wires actually go through it and come out the other side. There's these cutouts on the end here. And then the tool itself has a blade on it. So when you crimp it down, it cuts all those wires flush. And what you're left with is a really nice connection where every single wire inside the cable jacket is connected to that, to that connector. Um, big time saver, I prefer it. I, I really like these. Um, and they're relatively inexpensive. You can get these on Amazon. Now there's a couple different ways to strip the wire. One way is with this tool. You basically just slide it over the cable and rotate it a few times with your finger. And then you could slide the jacket off. I'll show you one more time. So you just basically slide it, rotate it, and pull the jacket off. Now the risk here is sometimes you nick the wires underneath. So I don't really prefer this method, but it is a way to do it. Another way to do it is to just nick the edge of the jacket with a sharp knife. Uh, an X-Acto knife works good for this. Then inside here is a string, and it's called a rip cord. And basically by design, it'll rip through the jacket. So you hold the cable, you pull this string. You could use pliers for this too. But once you get a grip, it's, it's usually pretty easy. And by ripping this cord, it'll open the jacket without nicking the wires. It's actually designed to do that. Um, so once you expose the wire, you just fold back the jacket, and then you can use a pair of scissors to cut the ripcord, the sleeving or the jacket, um, and then the little divider that's inside the cable. Um, and, and that divider's there because this is a Cat6 cable, so it's just by design. Um, and then what you're left with is the twisted pairs. Let's get this cable ready to crimp. I'm going to take some scissors and cut off the sleeving or the jacket. I'm going to cut off this divider and these dividers are actually meant for um, interference right they, they help prevent noise um, because it's a cat six and then for the rip cord you have to put a little pressure on it because it's just a string so just cut that off and now uh, we're gonna untwist these cables and get ready to crimp now a handy feature about the crimp tool is that it's got the color codes listed on the tool itself there's two networking standards that are most popular 568a and 568B. I'll be using 568B for the house. So just need to get the cable and untwist the, the wires and get them in the right order for 568B. Now the right color code is white orange orange, white green blue, white blue green, white brown brown. And that's from left to right with the pin of the connector facing away from you. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just getting everything lined up and straightened out you got to use your fingers to try to hold everything together before you slide the plastic crimp connector uh, over the cable and then crimp it down. Now once you have everything pretty much straightened out, I like to take a pair of scissors and just cut everything flush. Makes it a little easier to slide the plastic uh, connector over it. Alright, everything looks right, so I'm going to take a plastic connector. And what's really cool, you'll notice that when you slide this over, 
the cables, the wires go right through it. Um, and that's why it's called a pass-through connector. So I've got white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. So everything here is looking correct. Now, you want to get this connector over the jacket as much as possible. Because that's when, when you crimp this, that's what it's going to hold on to. Okay, so slide this down once you're comfortable um, with it and you think you've got it as far as it can go. Double check your color codes one more time. And then it's just a matter of inserting this into the crimping tool. The RJ45 connector will only fit in the RJ45 slot, so get that in there. And then all you need to do is give the tool a, a squeeze. And so just as you squeeze it, you'll see the, the wires on the back get cut off. Um, I like to squeeze it down more than once, uh, just because. Just um, and then once you pull it out, you'll see that the connections are all made nice and flush, nice and snug. And the crimp itself is crimped down to the cable jacket. So that's a pretty good connection. Everything's flush at the top. And overall, I think this looks pretty good. You've got to love these pass-through connectors. Now we're just going to do the same thing on the other side of the cable. So we're just going to nick the jacket, peel the cable, cut off all the excess, slide the connector on once everything's in the right order, insert it into the tool, give it a good squeeze, let the tool do the work, and we're done. Now we have a completed cable with a connection on each side. This looks good, but now we need to make sure that it's actually good. And to do that, we're going to use the cable tester. So this is the cable tester. There's multiple ports on it. Um, it can basically uh, slide apart. We probably don't need to do that uh, in this case because the cable's right here. Um, but this would be good if there was a cable end on each side of the wall or in different locations, for example. So in order to use the tester, we're going to plug one end of the cable into the receiving end of the tester. We'll plug the other end of the cable into the transmitter end of the tester. And then we just hit the switch. And you see the LEDs are going through the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's basically telling us that there is a connection between each of the pins on both ends of the cable, AKA the cable's good. You could slow it down too by moving the switch to the S position. Same concept, just move slower. Um, and so this means the cable's good. Now just disconnect everything, and you've got a working Ethernet CAT6 cable that you just made yourself. Now, once you get this concept down, you can get a reel of cable, a pack of connectors, the tools that you saw in this video, and you can make your own custom length Ethernet cables. For me, the next part of this project is running cable through the attic and through the walls. Uh, into a closet that I've decided will be the server room. And that's how I'm going to wire my house with Ethernet. Thanks for watching.